Thank you, Andre, for the $1.74 plus tax gift of Doritos. <laughs> I, too, was shopping at Superstore yesterday. So today we, we are sort of beginnings. We're start of something new. Um, yes, and it's also my birthday, but I tried to I tried to keep things off the record as much as possible, but then I forgot. Facebook tells everybody everything. So that's a word of advice. But today, it's, it's, it's a beginning. And beginning and endings are great times to evaluate things. Uh, to look at where we've come from or where we've headed. It's sort of the end of the year, you look at, oh, did, did everything reach what I expected? And at the beginning of the year, you're saying, okay, this is what I'm going to get to do this year. At the end, we, reval- we look back and say, did, did expectation line up with reality? And at the start, we look forward expectantly with awe, excitement, and wonder, anticipating what tomorrow might bring. So today I stand before you with uh, a heaping portion of anticipation and excitement as I get to join and participate in what God has been doing in and through uh, Willow Lake. And that is exciting, and it's, it's encouraging, and at times it's a bit overwhelming, but it's good, and we're anticipating. I think the biblical language for what Alyssa and I um, are, are seeing happening is that we are being grafted in to the Willow Lake family. So that's a little bit about us. We, uh, yeah, we arrived on Tuesday and on Monday night I had heard from at least three different people that the weather is not going to be great tomorrow. <laughs> we had initially been thinking, oh, it's supposed to be minus two, a little bit of snow, and all of a sudden it was baptism by fire. Uh, it was funny, in the last song, the, the cold winter rain uh, it's like, I know that experience, and then here we got to to the the, the winter snow. But yeah, it was it was good. Um, it was a good trip. Thank you for everyone who who offered to help, um, who participated for what the church did. It was um, this will be the fifth or sixth place that Alyssa's lived in the last four and a half years. I've lived one less because I was living in the apartment when she moved in when we got married. But so. We've done a lot of moving, but this one was a lot bigger than just across town or a couple cities over. So it could have been stressful, but thank you for that. And uh, we, are, we are slowly getting settled, trying to figure out what's in what box and where it goes. So, But yeah, so let's transition a little bit. As I mentioned, um, today is, is, is a beginning. It's an opportunity for us to, to start looking forward. And uh, I was looking through some things, and a couple texts jumped out to me. Um, some texts that seem to ask uh, a similar related question, a question that says, why am I here, or what have I come to do? Um, one of them is, is Jesus um, in Mark 1, uh, 29 through 39, and one is um, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, um, the passage 16 through 23, but we'll, we'll look only at 19. And we'll get the, there in a moment. But that's what I want to unpack a little bit. Those two, two, uh, two sections in a little bit of info and then, and then connect them to Willow Lake a little bit. Not that I know a whole lot about Willow Lake, but Willow Lake and how um, coming to join a part of it, coming to be a part, coming to participate in it is significant. So let's pray and then I will read the text. Oh Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather We thank you that we can, um, as we will in a few moments, remember um, the cross uh, through communion. We thank you that we can can have a little bit of fun looking at uh, at photos, and we can have a little bit of of fun, and we can enjoy fellowshipping. And now as we we look to your text, as we look to your word, I pray that you will open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and minds to see what you have for us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you could head over to to Mark chapter 1. Starting at verse 29, we'll read down to verse 39. And then we'll spend a few minutes there, and then we'll jump to the 1 Corinthians passage in a little while after. I didn't check your, your pew Bible page number, I'm sorry. And then verse 29. After Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, they went to Simon and Andrew's home. Now Simon's mother-in-law was sick, uh, in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. So he went in to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she prepared a meal for them. That evening, after sunset, 
many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. But because the demons knew who he was, he did not allow them to speak. But day, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Later, Simon and the others went out to find him. When they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. But Jesus replied, We must go on to other towns as well, and I will preach to them too. That is why I came. So he traveled through the region of Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. The Jesus we meet in the earliest chapters of Mark is in the middle of of performing mighty works, um, mighty words, mighty deeds. He's, he's talking these, these teachings of, of power that people don't understand, that they're, they're amazed, they're awed, they're confused because he's teaching as one who has authority and not one of the scribes is the contrast. But at the same time as, as talking and teaching and inspiring with them words and confusing them, he's also doing these, these um, mir- miracles upon miracle upon miracle. If you look at the first um, about eight chapters of Mark, that is, that is the key theme that goes around, mighty works mighty deeds. Jesus doing amazing things and speaking amazing teachings. It's sort of the section that has this, these, um, these, this question of, of who is Jesus? I mean, we saw it even here that they say Jesus wouldn't allow the demons to speak because they knew who he was. It's sort of this messianic secret that we as the reader knows, know who Jesus is. We were told from the very beginning, but the players in the text, the players, they haven't yet heard only only on the cross when the roman centurion says truly this is the son of god is a character speak publicly so jesus has been healing these various diseases he's been casting out the demons and forbidding them so after the excitement if we saw the first half after healing simon's mother-in-law and the entire town coming so you can imagine the energy as everybody's waiting at the door After that excitement, very early the next morning, Jesus departs. He prays. He's alone. And Jesus' companions, Simon and, and the disciples who have not fully formed into the group of 12 yet, but as they gather together, they're sort of the VIPs of Capernaum. Like they're all of a sudden, they're, they're significant and important. And so they go looking for Jesus, saying, come on, people want more. We need to see more of this. We need to see more of this. We need to see more of this. Come on, this, this is exciting. But we have Jesus away. And Jesus responds with those words. This is why I came. And why did he come? Because there's other towns I must go to. And to them I must preach also. So that's what he does. He goes from that place and he starts traveling around Galilee, traveling around the area, preaching and teaching and doing miracles. Mighty works, mighty deeds. Mighty works, mighty deeds. So we get a hint of the purpose of Jesus. We get a hint of why he came. He came to preach, to proclaim. He came to tell them the good news. But what good news? For that we need to see the very beginning of the book of Mark. And if we look at the book of Mark, we see that this is the good news or the gospel of Jesus, Son of God. And then there's this this double quotation where we see that Jesus has come. Jesus has come to be the embodiment of Yahweh. Jesus has come to reveal the Lord. Jesus has come to initiate the royal reign or the kingdom of God on earth. Mark 1.15 talks about the time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus has come to proclaim the good news. The content is in essence himself. And that is would be unpacked as you go forward through the next um, 16 chapters of Mark to understand who is Jesus. Who am I? Why have I come? And that's what Jesus is saying. I've come to reveal in essence myself. I've come to be the presence of Yahweh returning to Israel, returning to Zion. 
And it's the first story of why have I come? A couple decades later, there's a missionary, an emissary of Jesus, who, who has, deals with sort of a similar concept. It's slightly different in the sense that, uh, you know, he's not Jesus, <laughs> but, but he's, he's relaying that idea. So if you could flip over to, to 1 Corinthians 9, um, we'll start reading at 19 and following in just one moment. If you've read through Corinthians, both uh, first and second, you'll notice that they're pretty messed up. Like they have a lot of issues. Like it's just Paul going, now about this, get this sorted out. About this, get this sorted out. And uh, 1 Corinthians 9 um, is, deals with, with this question of, of food to idols, idol meat. And just to quit back, on, uh, Corinth was, was divided against itself and it was divided against Paul, but it was separated by the few elites who were acting like, like elites in society do. They would have all the, the nice food while the, while the poor people around them would have the table scraps. So they were acting the same way you would do in a Roman society, not what you would do in a, in a church family. So Paul is dealing with that question specifically in 8 through 11. But this is what he says, starting at verse 19. Even though I am a free man with no master... I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under that law, even though I am not subject to the law. I did this so that I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. When I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from the law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness, for I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. This is fascinating. Paul, Paul starts this, this section. It's a section within a section. But he starts it with, even though I am free from all, I have enslaved myself to all. So ontologically, I am free, but I act the slave in essence. And then he explains what that means. To the Jews, I became like a Jew. To those under the law, I became like those under the law. To, to the Gentiles, in essence, to those without law, I did not follow the law. And then to the weak, I became weak. There's a little bit of a higher contrast between the first three and the fourth like it, in, in all of them, he says, I became as, I became as, I became as. And in the final one, he says, I became weak. So, but Paul's, um, his culmination is, I trying to find some common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Paul says that his mission if he was to answer the question, why have I come? Why, why did I come to Corinth? Why am I still writing to you in Corinth? Is because I want to find common ground with everyone. It's sort of this incarnational model. It's this model, of he wants to get in it with them. He wants to get on the ground. And if we remember in Corinth, Paul slaved away making tents so that he didn't have to accept any money. He wanted to be able to proclaim the good news of Jesus with legitimacy and authenticity. In my, in my new office, um, there's a green sign. I think, I think they're up to date. Hopefully you didn't change all the, uh, all the missions and, and I'm using, but there's this green sign and it, that too, most of you are, are familiar with because you see them around the church. And it says, Vision and Mission of Willow Lake Baptist Church. And it goes, one of the lines says, be followers of Jesus, putting God's love into action. And then it says, to engage in God's story by living incarnational lives of worship, discipleship, and service in our communities, both locally and globally. So I was, I was sitting there and I looked up and, it, and that, those statements excited me. To engage in God's story by living incarnational lives. And as a pretty big fan of, of Paul, I was thinking, it's very Pauline. It's very much in line with what Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians 9. 
Willow Lake strives to live incarnational lives, strives to be in it with them, to live like Jew to the Jews, as it were, or whatever they find as Winnipeggers. This excites me. This encourages me. This makes me enthusiastic to become a participant in that, which leads me to the third, why am I here or what am I doing? And that's me. And again, we are far removed now from the Apostle Paul and specifically Jesus. But I want to be sort of the, the, a good model of a, of a pastor. I want to be a pastor who can be involved in, in shepherding and leading. But I want to first and foremost be, be like Paul said, though I am free from all, a slave to all. One of the biggest challenges when you're in ministry is suddenly your head gets bigger. (laughs) Suddenly you're like, I can do this. I got all the answers. I went to seminary. I can read the Bible. I read so-and-so's book. And now I'm here and I want to say I'm honored to be here. I see that you have trusted me enough to call me and invite me to be a part of Willow Lake. And I want to reward that trust and continue to earn more trust. Continue to be allowed to be a part of your lives. And I'm sorry, I don't know many of your names yet and I've been trying to but some are going in and out and I had some memorized in December and now I forgot them. So it might even be easier. Um, I think my, uh, my email address is, is in the bulletin. If you even just want to send a picture with your name, and then uh, we can start uh, key carding. I'm um, sorry, like, yes, you know, we can start quizzing. I'll, I'll have Alyssa quiz me at home. But, but the challenge for all of us, uh, both individual as a church, is to see our role in the story and play our part. My role is to, is to be pastor. But that role is only instilled in me because you have, in essence, empowered me by saying, Matt, we trust you. And if I live faithful to to that, you will reciprocate by allowing me to continue serving faithfully. So my promise is to do my best to live up to the trust you have put in me, to be faithful. So today is day one, well, today is Sunday one, of what I hope to be a long journey together. And I know you're not really supposed to, you know, have the sermon about yourself, but I think it's fitting to say that this, this is who I am, this is what I want to be. And I need you guys to either keep me in line, to, to, to encourage, to walk with, to sometimes you're going to have to metaphorically smack me. And other times, you're just going to say, no, Matt, go for it. But we can, we can do together. And I, like, this is, I don't know what God has in store for us. I have no idea. But I'm excited to see it and to walk that journey with all of you. And I hope you are too. So, so I don't really have a bang, bang take home other than look for, for your role at, uh, at Will Lake, whatever it may be. Um, whatever you're doing now, whatever you long to do, and let's figure out what we can do together. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can gather. We thank you for the love you have for us. We thank you for the role and the history and the heritage of Willow Lake Baptist Church. And we thank you for for those years in the past. And as we even start a transition to a a future, a new future, we pray that you will continue to, to, to show favor to give us wisdom, to, to lay, lay a journey out for us of how we can best serve you faithfully, uh, both in Winnipeg and around the world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite uh, Mark up here to lead us as we celebrate the Lord's Supper.